Today I want to talk to you about managing expectations when you're out on the golf course. So I've given us three lies here. We've got fairway length lie, semi-rough, about two inches. This one, the grass is about six inches long in places. Now I see a lot of my amateur clients going for their longer irons, going for their hybrids, going for their fairway woods from all three lies. Let's be right, if you're on the fairway and you're feeling confident, hit your hybrid, hit your fairway wood, try and promote as much distance as you can towards the hole, no problem with that. However, if you're in the semi-rough, you need to manage your expectations, you need to look at the lie, assess it carefully and think about what club you're going to use. I've brought three, 58 degree wedge, seven iron and three iron. Now, most amateurs shouldn't even have one of these in their bag. The likelihood of them generating a good strike with a three iron like this, probably not going to happen. So if you're one of those amateurs, you might occasionally hit it from the fairway, but generally I wouldn't bother. So get rid of that one. Seven iron. Now from the fairway, no problem at all. You can choose. Semi-rough, the club is going to get grass struck between the face with the grooves and the ball. Okay. So we need to generate a steeper, more V-shaped swing. So it's got a sharp face at the bottom. We want to get down to the back of the ball and try and prevent the grass getting trapped between the club face and the ball. Otherwise you lose control and it's difficult to judge distance. The rough, ground, the rough grass is going to catch the neck and the hosel of the club and cause it to close, twisting the face left if you're a right-hander, de-lofting it, making it difficult to get the ball out. Okay, So you want to make sure that you've got enough loft and feel as though you're gripping the club strong and tight, preventing it from ripping it out your hands. So semi-rough, you've got more options than you have from the deep rough, but not as many from the fairway. Then we move on to ball number three, which is deep. If I put my foot in the grass here, you can see it disappears. Quite a deep lie, that is nasty. So unless the ball is sat on top of the rough and it's balanced there and it's hovering, you're going to have to go for a wedge. You need loft or you have to be very, very strong in your club speed. Try and make sure that you're as fast as possible with maintaining as much loft as possible on the face. You've got to get the ball out of the rough. The grass is going to grab around the hosel again more than ever because it's thick and lush. You can see how green it is. That means it's heavier. It's going to rip that club over, turning the face closed, making it go low and left. So most people only hop along in the rough and they get the ball going a few yards. Try and hold on tight. Prevent it from closing. Try and resist the temptation for your hands to release the club head over. Try and make sure that the heel is staying more ahead of the toe. Keep the loft on the club and it might fly out. So fairway, you choose, semi-rough, manage the lie, think about it, assess it carefully, make a considered approach to the club that you're going to use. When you're in the deep rough, you've just got to hack it out. The most lofted club will help you get that ball out of the rough. So you won't get much distance, but you're back in play. It'll keep those big numbers off your scorecard. I hope that helps. Try it when you're back out on the golf course. If you like the video, click subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.